How pathetic can he be? Now we're finding out that Prince Harry was never even a pilot. He was only ever a co-pilot, and he believes that he should receive an award for that. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the King YouTube channel. You know, maybe I'm confused, but in my mind, living legend describes somebody who actually did something. If we're talking about a living legend in aviation, then I would assume it's somebody who did something impressive related to flying planes. Whether it's commercial aircraft or military or whatever, I'm not really sure. I mean, honestly, I'm not that into aviation. But in my mind, that would not be an award that would be given to a co-pilot. Well, apparently I'm wrong, because Prince Harry is receiving this award. And guess what? According to people who served with Harry, Harry was only number two in his own aircraft. I mean, honestly, how pathetic can he be? I almost feel sorry for him. So we already knew that this Living Legends in Aviation award was absolute BS, and now we're getting more and more reports from people who know more than we do about what exactly Harry did when he was serving time in Afghanistan. And apparently it is even less than we originally assumed. So according to this exclusive in The Sun, Harry was only number two in his own aircraft, ex-commander says, as Royal mocked over Legend of Aviation award. So whether or not he deserves it, apparently Harry really is going to be inducted as a living legend of aviation next Friday at an award ceremony hosted by John Travolta. In addition to being an actor and a Scientologist, apparently John Travolta is also an aviation ambassador, whatever that means. Now, does the fact that this award ceremony is littered with celebrities make it any less meaningful? Yeah, absolutely. Does the fact that they're honoring Prince Harry make the award ceremony any less legitimate? Again, absolutely. According to The Sun, the event was created by the nonprofit Kitty Hawk Air Academy to honor people who make significant contributions to aviation and aerospace. So again, I gotta ask, how exactly does Harry fit into this? I mean, what significant contributions did he make exactly? So sure, he completed two tours of Afghanistan as a forward air controller and an Apache helicopter pilot. And he did fly countless training missions in the UK, US, and Australia. But last time I checked, flying training missions does not really count as a significant contribution to aviation and aerospace. And what really makes this all the more ridiculous is that Harry is going to be up there along with other living legends of aviation, like Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, who actually did do something to earn their place. Harry, on the other hand, no. I mean, again, I'm confused about how this is even happening. With Harry and Meghan's financial troubles, I find it odd that they would spend so much money on a bought and paid for award, but who knows, maybe they had something stashed away just for a time like this. Some kind of rainy day fund for awards. Understandably, many people, both on social media and off social media, are pitching a fit at the fact that Prince Harry is being awarded with this honor. He doesn't deserve it. For example, retired military officer Colonel Richard Kemp says the award is just celebrities massaging each other's egos. He spoke with the son saying he was a gunner in an Apache helicopter in Afghanistan, but so were many, many other people. Colonel Kemp went on to say, I can think of many people who did pretty extraordinary things while serving in the British and American armed forces, which would be much more deserving of an award like this. It's obviously because of who he is, not what he did. An Apache is crewed by two people, a pilot and a gunner. Harry was a gunner. He was number two in the aircraft. There have been some incredible aeronautical exports from helicopter pilots in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other war zones. There are some extraordinary stories, many covered by the sun, involving enormous flying skill and bravery. As far as I'm aware, Harry, though I commend him for going out there and doing it, did not accomplish feats like these. Well, and I think that's the thing that's such a slap in the face to anybody who served in the military, especially in the Air Force, in either the UK or in America. It doesn't make sense to award Harry with this. I mean, come on. Like Colonel Kemp points out, he was only ever number two in his own aircraft. Harry was never even the pilot. He was just a gunner. And let's not forget that he bragged about how many members of the Taliban he killed, which is such a tacky and just unheard of thing to do. Harry does not deserve this honor. End of story. And it is sad to think about how many people are being passed over who truly do deserve this honor. There are so many people who served in Afghanistan who performed amazing, commendable acts of bravery, but Prince Harry is not one of them. Prince Harry was never really in any danger. I mean, his life was never at risk. They made sure that he was taken care of the whole time. 
Harry's time in Afghanistan, let's be real, was nothing more than a PR exercise. And look, I understand why the royal family did it. I understand that Harry needed some help getting his head on straight. And it did help him. He said that. But at the same time, let's not act like that his time in the military was something that it's not. Colonel Kemp went on to say he didn't do anything extraordinary that every other helicopter gunner didn't do. It's obviously just motivated by his celebrity. That's the way these awards are. They're not to recognize true greatness. They're more about publicity. Comparing Neil Armstrong to Harry is just hilarious. They couldn't be further apart, really. You know, honestly, thanks to Harry and Meghan, I view these award ceremonies in a completely different light. It now has become apparent to me that most of these awards that Hollywood people give each other are nothing more than PR exercises. They're completely made up. They're basically all bought and paid for awards. Now, there are some legitimate ones, like the Golden Globes and the Oscars, for example. And if you notice, Harry and Meghan are never invited to these legitimate award ceremonies. They have to make do with the ones that you can pay to attend, because, I mean, let's be honest here, they're never going to get invited to anything that involves real merit. Lord Alan West, the former head of the Royal Navy, also had something to say. He told the Mail Online, He is not a living legend of aviation. To suggest he is is pathetic. It makes the whole thing seem a bit of a nonsense if they're willing to pick someone like Prince Harry. There are lots of people who deserve to be called this, but not Prince Harry. I find it extraordinary he has been picked. I believe that was how most of us reacted when we first heard this news. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for Harry to be chosen. Out of all the people in the world, especially in the UK and the US, who served in the military or who just flew a plane in some way, shape, or form, Harry is about the least qualified to receive any kind of award, especially considering he never even got to fly on a real mission. It was only ever training missions they allowed him to be the pilot for. And according to some reports, Harry had to take his pilot's exam about three times and failed all three times, so he never even became an official pilot. One more thing that I want to touch on just a little bit about this whole sham of an award ceremony is that it's being hosted by John Travolta, and Tom Cruise has also been honored by this event or by this organization or whatever. So some people are starting to wonder if there could be some connection to Scientology, because John Travolta, as you know, is a big-time Scientologist, and we can say the same for Tom Cruise. So could it be that Harry and Meghan, now that they are so incredibly desperate, are turning to Scientology for help? I mean, honestly, I wouldn't put it past Meghan Markle. Now, Harry, I don't believe he has any interest in Scientology, but I think that he is dumb enough to be swept up in their nonsense. And I think Meghan would see that there are a lot of very well-connected Scientologists out there. So she figures that if she gets involved in Scientology, then they're going to help her out as well. To be fair, Meghan Markle would do great as a Scientologist. I mean, she's got that kind of delusional, narcissistic, self-important attitude that most Scientologists have. I think she would absolutely be able to pretend to accept the BS claims that they make, and she'd be able to go along with all their nonsense perfectly. So it is going to be something to watch out for. If we see more connections between Meghan and Harry and people like John Travolta or Tom Cruise, it's going to lead people to speculate that maybe Harry and Meghan have also been sucked into Scientology. Honestly, Megan's life is already completely destroyed, so Scientology might help her. And as for Harry, well, if he hasn't completely lost touch with who he used to be, he needs to find a way out of California as soon as possible. And you, what do you think of Harry being honored as a legend in aviation? Please let me know your opinion below in the comment section. If you enjoyed our video today, don't hesitate to like and share it with anybody else who would appreciate it too. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.